Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Cloud Whisperers. I'm David Broussard. And I am just Brian today. You're just Brian today? Well, that, I'm that, just Brian. that yeah, sounds just Brian. fine. I mean, I guess technically yeah. today I'm David C. Broussard, because I put that in my, my name. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, we are, the, we are the Cloud Whisperers, and we've got a really cool episode for you today. We're going to bring in a really awesome guest. Uh, to talk about a topic that is uh, near and dear to all of our hearts and pretty much everybody in the Microsoft space these days. But before we get to that, Brian, what have you been up to lately? I don't have any like fun stuff that I do. I think I say this all the time. I don't have fun stuff I do. I work too much. Yeah, so, yeah, I understand yeah, that. This is actually kind of fun. This is kind of fun. I mean, I've, I've been working with email marketing automation uh, services. Oh, cool. So I've been looking right. at the different products that are out there. Brevo is one of them. Uh, it used to be like send in blue or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm tying it, I'm tying it into the training site that I'm getting ready to launch. So I have some sort of way to, you know, have mailing lists and drip campaigns and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I've been having some fun with that lately. Um, you know me and I love workflow automation and all that stuff. I'm a huge, uh, used to be SharePoint designer, uh, <laughs> infopath of uh, yeah. you know, a fan and now, uh, you know, power automate and all that. So I get into the email automation and it's actually a lot easier in some of these products, a lot easier than you think it would be. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what I've been playing with lately and I'm actually kind of having fun with it. So no, that's, that, that, that's awesome. That, that, that sounds like a, yeah, so, a useful, a useful thing to uh, pursue. That's what I love about you, Brian. You're always, yeah, you're always, you know, your hobbies are always produ producing something useful, right? Unlike, unlike my hobbies, well, which, I don't know which tend which, which tend to just produce useful. nothing valuable at all. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, what so, hobbies are you up to, David? <laughs> well, you know, so I'm actually I've actually I'm gone back to an oldie, but a goodie, um, you know, for my birthday and Christmas, my my family bought me a, uh, a new gaming PC. It's a it's a des desktop PC. So I got a Ryzen seven and yeah. um, it's got a it's got a really nice um, graphics card, a RTX 4060. And um, I, I went ahead and put another 16 gigs of RAM. So it's got 32 gigs of RAM in it and everything like that. And, uh, I, you know, partly it was for me to play Starfield, which has been a great game. But uh, just because I wanted to see what it looked like, I went and installed World of Tanks and World of Warships, which, which I used to play for years. World of Tanks I played for like seven years. Um, and I've actually gotten into playing some World of Warships, uh, which is surprisingly fun. Um, and... You know, it, I've always loved big ships anyway, and I love love naval history and everything like yeah. that, and World War II naval history. Uh, and it's just been kind of fun to uh, to cruise around, and I'm I'm finally learning how to play. My 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 friend told me that you know, uh, I've got I've got not quite gigabit at home, but I've got much faster internet at home combined with a much faster computer, and I've discovered that I actually play better. <laughs> because I'm not laggy all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, that actually makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> who who would have thunk it? But uh, yeah. So, or you could just scream it, lag in the middle of it and be like, something happened. Well, man. yeah, <laughs> but that, that that gets old after a while. So, so yeah, sure. Brian, I want to tell you, we've got a very interesting episode today, which we are calling episode 45 a cloud whisperer co-pilot holiday. I wanted to put special on the end because a co-pilot, uh, a, a cloud whisperer co-pilot holiday special. Uh, and to that end, we're bringing in a very special guest, uh, a person that uh, that you and I have known for years, uh, a good friend of mine, and and her name is Maria Espino. And I'm going <laughs> to say it right for the first time, like in, in forever. Um, Maria is an amazing individual. I, I, I said, I've known her for years. We've worked very closely together uh, when we were both at the same company. And uh, she is she's the president of TLP Gaming, The Last Prophecy Gaming, which is a, a very large gaming group. And uh, uh, she's also really the, the mover, the shaker, the prime motivation behind uh, the after the sequels set of films. And I would recommend that if you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> yes, and it is Star Wars related, uh, go out and hit, it's after the sequels.com. Is that right? Is that the right, that the right URL? There yep. we go. See, go to after the sequels.com <laughs> and you can see some of the amazing things uh, that, that Maria is, has done in pulling together some amazing talent to continue to tell some fantastic Star Wars stories. And I, for one, am, am really looking forward to when these things are released and I can watch the full set of it. But that is not 
why we brought Maria here today. <laughs> um, we actually brought Maria here today because she actually is um, a very talented computer person as well. <laughs> okay. That's how we got to know each other. <laughs> And, and so while she runs a gaming uh, a gaming group and she is producing movies now, um, what I know Maria yes. about is uh, <laughs> knowing about my, the Microsoft infrastructure, knowing about the, the 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 way to take technology and apply it to help organizations get their work done. And so what we wanted to bring her in to talk about is a discussion about how to get your organization, ready for the wave of co-pilots that are coming. And it's not co-pilot, it's co-pilots, <laughs> big plural there, right? Because yep. it seems like everywhere I turn, there's another co-pilot. And now Microsoft has said, hey, everybody, you can make your own co-pilots. And I'm like, wait a minute, do I have a co-pilot that help me make my co-pilot? Because I could probably <laughs> use that to, to assist me there. That's right. It's called yeah. co-pilot inception. Copilot. Oh, oh, yeah, Christopher Nolan. There we go. Great reference there. So, <laughs> so there are so many copilots that are out there. Um, Maria, give us a quick like overview in your mind of of the different kinds of copilots that are out there. I mean, this could take an hour at this point yeah. in time. But yeah. what 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 have you seen out there? I mean, we've seen M three sixty five, well, copilot for Microsoft three sixty five, right. which is starting to roll out, right? Mm -hmm but it has certain restrictions to it. Like got to have 300 users going to cost $30 a month, which I yeah. think by the way is a great price. But after that, there's still a lot of other places that, that we see co-pilot. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a separation of church and state. What is copilot? Mm -hmm. Copilot is Microsoft's version of AI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's chat GPT version 4.0, right? Like it's, it's all of that combined into a, a, a set of tools that basically operates within a specified tenant. So it's like using the, the organizational data from that company um, to, you know, enable automation, which Brian is, is, is so pro <laughs> automation and enable other things, but bringing that automation out of like out of the code and into the everyday person, right? Like that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the goal from Microsoft. So it does kind of come in three major varieties, right? Um, there's Azure Copilot, which is very infrastructure and security and compliance based and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's, you know, Microsoft, Microsoft Copilot, which is out of their Microsoft 365 tenant. So it's very cloud-based. Um, and then there's, you know, the bigger, and those are the three big ones, right? There's more, but, mm -hmm. and, and the big one I think is Windows Copilot because it's been rolled out to pretty much anybody that has Windows 11. So, mm -hmm. so that's a large rollout. Um, uh, so I think that's like the bigger one that nobody talks about is Windows Copilot Co because it's available to you right now, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also <laughs> Copilot available to the Power Platform and to the Dynamics Platform and and all these other Copilots, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the three yeah. major ones are Azure, Microsoft, and Windows, right? Um, um, I think those are the ones that are like really going to hit like the ground running when it comes to usability uh, and an adoption, right. For the everyday person. Right. Um, whereas, you know, if you have Git, and, yeah. I mean, another one to mention is GitHub copilot, right. And you have mm -hmm. GitHub copilot and, and power platform and dynamics. Those are really strongly, you know, kind of tailored to the developer, to the architect, to those major tech people that are writing code every day. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. whereas the other three can really, um, be utilized in a, in a much more like user centric function, right? Um, so I think that's like the three major ones, um, you know. And I mean, my 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 experience really lies within Windows Copilot and Microsoft 365 Copilot. I know very little about Azure Copilot, um, but uh, but I do know its capacity and stuff like that. And there's different, like I, I talk a little bit about how you know Microsoft has has um, groups of people that kind of inform them about, hey, we have this cool little new feature. We want to try it out and give us feedback. So they have all these little groups that they have that really kind of 
dive into, I mean, we have people who are completely tech, tech illiterate, right? Mm -hmm. All the way to people like me who, I mean, I'm a certified master architect, I'm former MVP, all that kind of stuff. So um, all these people are kind of put together into these groups. And, you know, uh, we kind of, <laughs> we kind of understand that the, 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 the tools and the, and the utility of this is being targeted to all of those groups of people from that architect all the way down to, you know, like I said, an administrative assistant or a customer service representative, you know, that's, you know, at the lower levels of a company. Right. So, um, that is Microsoft's vision. So, um, I think yeah, that's so want to play mostly. So if, if we think about this, then, I mean, one of the places that Copilot is out there that people have seen a lot of, and we talked about this on our last episode uh, with Norm, is is with um, code generation, right? And mm -hmm. so using it in, in GitHub, using it in Power yeah. Automate, um, yeah. to go out and, and, and you know, in, in a way... There's an, there's an old joke. I think I've seen a t-shirt that said, I got my CS degree before Google was invented, right? And, <laughs> yes. Yes. you know, um, a lot and, of and, truth. And, well, there, there's, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, I mean, but I'm, yeah. I'm also, I also think of the whole, uh, you know, Albert Einstein quote, when they asked him, you don't remember your phone number. And he's like, that's what a phone book is for. You know, the <laughs> that's end, exactly right. You know, it's true. But I mean, you know, I, I don't remember the function references for things I don't use all the time, Right. Because I know I can just go to learn.microsoft.com or I can I can yeah. Bing search for it, right? Yeah. And find something yeah. uh, to, to, to learn how to do something. And uh, and so Copilot, in a way, is is really helping us with that kind of process, right? Absolutely. It's 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 helping everybody be better at searching for the appropriate content yeah. and topic Absolutely. that they need. So that that's one thing, and and I and but but if you think about it, you know, Maria, you were talking about that Microsoft's vision, Satya's vision, if you will, for Copilot is he wants he wants AI to be used by everybody in every Everyone. aspect of their job. Correct. And so, yeah, I'm I'm sure developers will go out there and yeah, we're we're There's we're a lot of early, talk around we, those folks, yeah, right? <laughs> we, yeah, and 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 we tend to be early adopters anyway. We're going to go out and we're going to use this stuff. Okay. Pe people are going to use it. I know people who are already using it a lot. There's lots of podcasts and, you know, blog articles about how to do this out there. But when we think about, and, and, and by the way, you also mentioned the Azure one, which mm -hmm. as a compliance, you know, somebody who cares a lot about compliance, yeah. you know, that whole ability of, you know, being able to find documents that, you know, should be tagged and aren't uh, being able to find documents that haven't been modified in a long time. Yeah or, or yeah. accessed in a long time, all these kinds of things that we can use absolutely data and stuff like that yeah. is going to be yeah. really and Just powerful. imagine like, you know, we, we, you know, to that point, to that very point, how mm -hmm. hard has it been for administrators to manage document repositories? <laughs> I mean, since, yeah. since the day <laughs> I can remember, right. Right. Oh, how yeah. hard has it been for administrators to say, oh, my God, give me all of the, uh, uh, you know, give me all of the documents that have a social security number on it. I yeah. That has been such a hard thing to do. And Microsoft has slowly crawled its way to do this. If you think AI is new, it's not. <laughs> right. No. Uh, so it, yeah. it has crawled its way to it by, you know, Viva Topics. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 um, you know, sh SharePoint, um, oh my God, I forgot. I blanked on the syntax. name. Syntax. Syntax, well, right. Now, now, well, well, now, now, now it's SharePoint, now, well, now, now, now it's SharePoint Premium. Right. Well, right. Just, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk about the licensing structure. Yeah, it's a whole nother, whole nother premium thing. premium too, thank you. Yeah. And, um, yes, Viva Pre Premium, just dropping that out there. True, um, so, true. So, um, you know, so all your platforms are going to have a standard premium thing, right? I, I just, yeah. I can see it already. Uh, but, yeah. but yeah, we've been slowly crawling our way towards this, this moment. And now administrators will be able to, if, if you can think of, of, of Copilot, think of it this way. It is the same as being able to go to Microsoft Learn and look up a document and search through that database and, and look for, you know, hey, what's the, what's the PowerShell for this, right? Let's, let's start with that because you know how PowerShell, 
PowerShell <laughs> than I am, right? <laughs> so look for, for the PowerShell for this, right? Like you go to Microsoft Learn, you look it up, you're typing, you're going away, you're scrolling through everything. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Um, just imagine being able to go on voice command and go, yeah. hey, co-pilot, yeah. give me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, get search. And they just, so it's like kind of having um, the Microsoft Learn library mm -hmm. on voice command. That's exactly okay. what AI okay. copilot, you know, AI slash copilot is, right? It's it's having knowledge on voice command, really, yeah. or just, you know, a prompt command, yeah. basically. And I, th I think good examples too, you know, getting good examples for people, you know, my shameless plug of get cloud savvy, like the light bulb coming out of the club, the uh, cloud, <laughs> that, you know, it's just, it's getting examples like that. One that I had from the other day, um, I work a lot with MSPs and mm -hmm. they have ticketing systems. And I was talking with this guy, he's like, yeah, you know, when we were working with chat GPT, I basically took a year's worth of our tickets and our categories are awful the way we categorize our tickets tickets and everything. And I gave chat GPT a year's worth of our tickets. And I said, create me a new set of categories for these, yep. you know, create me a new set, you know, organize these for me. And it's just examples like that. I think that, yep. that are really going to, you know, yep. you know, drive it home for us to, to be able to help people. Um, Absolutely. It's almost like and I it needs to be like, let me Google it for you. Let me Bing it for you. Let me co-pilot it for you or something, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, you need to come up with be, a website. There's going to be a verb coming out soon. <laughs> right? Oh, there's a, there's there we go. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, uh, and I think, I think, you know, and, and, and speaking of Bing, that's another one. Bing has its mm -hmm. own co-pilot, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. so there's co-pilot for everything. <laughs> that's right. But, they well, renamed I, it to co-pilot. It was yeah, it was or... Bing chat. <laughs> Yeah, but, I hate but once the word again, Bing. Oops, absolutely hate it. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> um, but 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 if we think about it, we talked about developers using like mm -hmm. Copilot for GitHub. We've talked yeah. about some of the Azure Copilot that's really going to be towards administrators. These are small yeah. groups of people. Yeah, okay? absolutely. High dollar, very valuable. Time 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 is money and everything. Yeah. But they're they're not the majority of users, well, and thus consumer. we get to. Right. Yeah, thus we get to the last areas of of copilot and AI. Yeah. And I and I will say I was I had to put together a presentation recently and uh I'm in PowerPoint. I had to, it was just like 15 mm -hmm. slides. Very yeah. straightforward. Yeah. But one of the things I discovered is Microsoft the design ideas that is inside of of uh, Office 365 and PowerPoint. Yep. They used to be just kind of Eh, they just looked at they, they looked they looked at the layouts and said you just reorganize your layout for the one yeah. slide you're on right let's that I was, was a, I was in there and it was coming back with some really amazing things and suggesting graphics that related to the words you used on the page which Correct. I thought was fascinating and that leads to Maria the part that I really want to talk about with you today which is for the vast majority of information workers, right, who aren't developers, who aren't administrators, one of these days they're going to get something, they're going to get co-pilot, right, yep. of some flavor. And whether it's for M365 or, or whatever. Um, but it, it, when we think about rolling this thing out, turning on the bits, flipping the thing, flipping the switches, that's part of it. And getting technically ready is part of it. But what are some of the challenges that organizations are going to face, right? So, yeah. In, in and, rolling this out. And, and 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 I think the biggest challenge is, of course, you know, like we like we've just talked about, there's administrators, mm -hmm. there's developers, right? And those mm -hmm. are, like you said, high value, high dollar uh audiences, right? Sure. Um, but but the brunt of it. And what Microsoft is really banking on is that those aren't going to be the only people who use Copilot. They really do, like like we said before, they really want everybody to use it. And if mm -hmm. you think about it, I mean, administrators and developer are a fraction of the technology consumers, right? Yeah. A fraction, a very small fraction, to be yeah. honest. And so, uh, like, for example, one of my clients from before was Bank of America. 250,000 employees, right? I mean, it's, it's wow. insane, right? And 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 their IT department was like 40, right? <laughs> so when I say fraction, I mean fraction. And so the value of it is being able to then utilize Copilot in a way that is valuable to that lowest common denominator of your company from, 
your your you know your desk help to you know your executive assistant to you know anybody in there that's like you know sales sales is going to be a great target for for copilot you know but even like you said just even people who just want copilot to spit them out again hey copilot give me a 15 slide powerpoint presentation on topic a b and c right yep. and it does it for you it just automatically mm -hmm. does that for you yep. and you know it's not perfect right so I'll, I'll i'll preface by saying that it's not perfect but if it can get you 40 percent of the way there and then you still you, you know you still have to like work on, you know edit it and work you know and and fill that the rest of that 60 percent you yeah. have a 40 percent head start on this That's task, right. right how valuable is that as far as time and hours on a 40 hour work week Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. look, and here's the thing I, I I pointed out to somebody recently is if you take the average information worker, let's just pretend, yeah. and it's probably this is probably low, that their that their cost to your company is sixty dollars an hour. Okay. And that's that's actually probably low, all things for considered, information right? Workers, right. Yeah, for for information workers. I'm not talking about yeah. just everybody, but information yeah. workers, right? Yeah. And if copilot for M365 is going to cost you 30 bucks a month. OK, then yeah. all that's got to do is make that person have 30 minutes more productivity in a month. Absolutely. And from everything I've seen, it would be substantially more than that. I mean, I spent oh, I spent I spent a couple of hours building that PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Yep. And if I hadn't had the design ideas, it would have just been bullet, 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 which would have worked. Right. Right. I mean, but yes, if I could, if I could now. instead say, hey, here's an outline, build me the presentation in this style and it right. goes, bam, now I can go in and I can edit yep. certain things and make Absolutely. it better. That's a lot easier. You're you're you're, you're and 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 I know you, Dave. You're that, that you're <laughs> you're you're the type of person I know you very well. <laughs> but <laughs> we're, we're we're work besties, me and him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, but you know, <laughs> I know that he is a great orator and he's you know, he's a great showman, but he's not great at putting the pa the presentations together in in a yeah. in a in a cohesive way. It's very hard for him to do that. And he spends a lot of time. Tell me I'm wrong, Dave. <laughs> He spent no, a we lot all look of at time that, trying that trying blank to page with the flashing down. cursor, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so he spends a yep. lot of time trying to to put those together. So imagine yeah. if we could just get you that 40, like I said, a 40% head start. That's amazing. And yep. that that yeah. is that is the value that I think people are not talking about enough out there. We are yep. talking about the developers. We're talking about the administrators and all the cool code that comes out of GitHub Copilot, um, you know, but we're yep. not talking about the administrative assistant who's trying to manage, you know, several calendars together and could just go, mm -hmm. hey, Copilot, give me a one hour meeting, uh, do it on Teams, and it has to be between this date and this date and between this hour and this hour. And it just, you know, with all these calendars. Oh, yeah. Seven, yeah. yeah. That's so much easier than having to go through the Outlook yeah. oh, calendar. Oh, I forgot. Make it recurring too, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And having to go through and just looking through, you know, like the, yeah. the, the columns in your calendar to find where, you know, where everybody. No. Yeah, right? So uh, I, it's even better than bookings, right? Like, I mean, you know, yeah. so, so things like that, everyday task, I think is, is, is a focus that we as consultants in this IT world need to kind of really focus on more. Um, we we have all those people out there, you know, the Ressa Duranis of the world and 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 the David Warners of the world. Shout out to those guys. Miss you yeah. guys. But you know, <laughs> we have all those people that can talk about, you know, all the power platform stuff, all the SharePoint stuff that's, you know, behind the scenes that Copilot can do, but we don't have enough people that are talking to the, you know, the, the help desk folks or the, you know, the sales folks or the, you know, administrative assistants, the folks that don't make yeah. $60 an hour. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and those are the people who are really going to utilize this kind of stuff the most. Right. Like I well, literally and was able to tell Microsoft word, to spit mm -hmm. me out a business plan for this, this, I gave it an outline and spit me yeah. out a business plan and it did it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it was a 15 page document. I was so shocked. So as shocked as you were about your PowerPoint presentation, yeah. I was shocked about that. Right. <laughs> well, and, and doing things like being able to 
look at meetings, look at emails, look at conversations and pick out things that you've missed. Pick out action items that 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 you know that are out there. Um, yeah. I was I was Pitch noticing just you know I mean I, of course, uh, full disclosure I haven't seen it in reality yet. I've just seen training videos and all kinds of stuff like that. Not so I always <laughs> I always I always say take this with a grain of salt. But you know that whole thing of coming back from a weekend or coming back from vacation, right? And you come back from vacation and suddenly you're like, hey. I, 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 well, it's not, I missed three meetings or, uh, I've got 2000 mail, you know, mail messages yeah. or, or you, you join a meeting late mm -hmm. and co-pilot is going to summarize for you what has happened to date. So yeah. you don't have to interrupt the meeting or you can at least feel like, you know, you know, kind of what's happening. That's some pretty cool stuff that's out there. It is. But. So, so Maria, what do you think if, 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 if you're, if you were advising an organization that knows that Copilot is going to come to it sometime in 24 and they're going to start using it, how would you advise them to start preparing, not, not the technical side of things, but preparing their employees yeah. for how to, for how to use this? So I think one of the first things that you really need to, to, to invest in, and this is where mm -hmm. consultants are really going to come in handy for these organizations and whether they are a 50 person organization or a 250,000 employee organization, right? Um, you are going to need analysis, like number one, you're going to want to go into these departments and figure out and not just talk to the department heads, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they, I love them all and they keep the businesses running, but they really have no clue what's going on on an everyday basis, right? So you've sure. got to talk to the, yeah. the people at in the trenches, right, of your business mm -hmm. and figure out what are some of the tasks that are they're doing every week, that they're repeating, that they're, you know, constantly like spending time on like go and ask them and you could do this with microsoft forms and have like a survey and just send it all mm -hmm. out and like what are the top five tasks you spent the most on and gather mm -hmm. all this analysis because that's really where it starts so there's going right. to be a lot of work for business analysts a lot of works for architects and probably minimal work for administrators in copilot i'll be honest mm -hmm. or well developers is, 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 is that's like a follow-on project right sure, but that sure. first First slate is business analysis across your entire organization down to the very, you know, in first, you know, your $15 an hour job, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, those are the people because you can, and unfortunately, this is just reality. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to start anything here, but the reality is there's going to be AI is going to develop enough, right? Mm -hmm. that those $15 an hour positions are going to go away. Yeah. Well, flat out. Well, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. to, to an extent, Unless although like manual something, you know, <laughs> manual labor, like factory yeah. work like that. Right. I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think it, it sort of depends. I mean, in the same way that when the personal computer came into uh, the office, yeah. right. Yeah. We got rid of secretaries, the, the secretarial pool, yeah. typists, file clerks, Right. And we pushed all of that work onto the the, the information workers, what we call them now, which yeah. I would call the middle managers. Yeah. Um, AI, the problem with them is they've just become so inundated with information that, you know, the, the, the Gartner studies I've seen have talked about, you know, you're spending 40 to 45 percent of your time searching for information. And so everybody, Microsoft, yeah. Google. Amazon, they are all working so hard to figure out ways to make it easier for you to find what it is that you need. And I think that's that's part of the key on on how we resolve this problem, right? And and that's and and, and that's what's so cool about Copilot. That's what Copilot really is, right? All these yeah. Copilots are built on top of a search engine. Yeah. yeah. So that does, by the way, though, imply. And this is this is my, my my dig from the technical standpoint, right? That does imply <laughs> that you do need to have a good information architecture. You do need Absolutely. to have yep. you you need to have taxonomy. You Guard need rails. to have security yep. in place and guardrails to make sure that when somebody says, you know, th the example I was given to people was, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could sit there and say, hey, look, 
here is my Word document over here that I've written up that that's maybe it's notes from a meeting with a call with, that I've had with a customer, right? So I've been on a call with a customer. Maybe it's the transcript. Maybe it's notes I've taken about what they're looking for, right? In in a yeah. solution, and I say, build me a PowerPoint presentation based upon the company slide deck, right? That we have, we have a templated slide deck, correct? Um, based on these notes right, that I have of what they want to, what they want to have. And based on this solution sheet of how we deliver it, right. And if it could actually go and build me at least the starting point of that, man, that's awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I've always told, I, you know, you know, my tagline has always been finding is the new doing, <laughs> right. Yes, um, I and, remember. And, and my signature has this, this quote, uh, it says, you know, intellect explains it to you. Instinct finds it. And what we are, you know, AI, and, and I've had that for, that's been my signature for decades, right? Because you, you, mm -hmm. you know, I, I come from information architecture, right? right? So like you're preaching oh, yeah. to the wire. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, so for me, you know, yes, AI is the, is now going to be a new ad additive. It's not a replacement. It's an additive. Right. It's an additive right. for the intellect part of that quote, mm -hmm. but people are still going to be the instinct part of that quote, right? Because, hmm. you know, no. AI is going to spit you out this beautiful presentation, but it's not going to be, like I said, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to need That's that true. human input, right? So those, mm -hmm. those lower level jobs that I just said could be replaced. Well, you know, those people really need to start to learn to adapt and then utilize these new tools to then foster themselves into a position where they're not replaceable. They're the instinct, right? Right. Um, and so I think that's a great, like, you know, target audience for, for, mm -hmm. for anybody that's working with information architecture or this or that being like, how can we get these people so that they don't lose their jobs in 10 years? Right. How can I train yeah. them and how can I educate them and, yeah. and, you know, adoption and change management. Right. And how yeah. to tailor ACM to, getting those people elevated and those that, that take the bait and that, you know, they're going to safeguard their jobs. And if you sit back on your laurels and think, Hey, I, may I, right. <laughs> um, they're, they're going to, yeah. you know, they're going to be gone. Right. <laughs> well, and, and, and I don't think that, that anybody wants to see AI eliminate somebody's right. job, right? right? What they, what they, what we want to see it do is get rid of what I like to call the scut work. Right. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. it's get, it's good things that I didn't want to do anyway. I mean, I, I I like building presentations, but I don't like the, huh, you know, what which which image should I use here? And, you know, I'd really like to I'd really like right. to have, you know, that, that whole I, I, I plead I plead nine years of Catholic school. I just don't do look and feel very well. OK, <laughs> so if so, if, if somebody <laughs> if somebody can do it for me and if that somebody happens to be you know, a co-pilot, right. Yeah. Uh, that Microsoft <laughs> one has <of> created <laughs> one of the many. Yes. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. the other, the other thing I think, um, that interests me, Maria, and I would like to get your thoughts on this and, and Brian yours as well, is that, you know, with the ability with Microsoft opening up, you know, like a co-pilot store. Okay. Where you, where organizations can write their own co-pilots. Mm -hmm. Um, this idea of, of being able to say, look, if I have a, a custom built application that I've built inside of my own you know, organization to do whatever insurance underwriting or right. claims management or, you know, um, inventory management or whatever. Right. Right. That ability for us to say, hey, I can use a search connector to surface that information inside of Microsoft search. And thus I can now use a copilot to read that information and build a natural language processing front end for a line of business system that also harkens to some kind of major changes in in the way organizations are going to deliver some of that functionality to people does that does that does does, does that make sense do you think you, am i am i am i am i am i predicting where i think things are going to go does that line up with what you're thinking maria or uh what you've heard people say I mean, oh, uh, there's a lot I can say <laughs> and there's a lot I can't say, right? Understand, but, um, understand. Um, right. But um, I think we're going to see a roll. Okay, I, I say it's a rollback, but it's really not. 
like okay in the in the last 10 years let's just say mm -hmm. we have kind of pulled away from customizations customizations yep. on your sharepoint customizations mm -hmm. on your team yeah. you know custom apps you know this and that like we have really pulled away no 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 no. please use out of the box out of the box out of the box out mm -hmm. of the box right and 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 i think we're gonna see kind of a rollback of that mm -hmm. within the structure of ai hmm. uh, okay. where where every company is going to be like no i need a custom bot i need a custom this i need a custom yeah. that um, and, and yes, they're going to use SharePoint out of the box and they're going to use teams out of the box, but they're going to integrate it with their, you know, custom co-pilots period, which, which makes so sense. Think, yes. And I think that that's going to be in technology. It's going to be kind of like this, 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 this shift to the developer mm -hmm. and the architect. Okay. And when I say, you know, there's so many different architects. I, you know, there's, there's, there's your, your systems architect, which they're very, they're basically high level developers their solutions architect which can do some of that but most can also do the the 365 you know view of things mm -hmm. there's information architects there's you know there's so many different you know architects right so i feel like we're going to be kind of rolling back to the days where those systems architects are going to come back in, in full force and they're going to be like yeah i do what you can't do Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I feel yeah. like that's really going to, we're going to see it. And it's going to be like those people are really, if you want to be that kind of system architect, you are going to have to have a certain skill set of logic, you know, programming, you know, core programming. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to be a master of several languages. You, you really are going to, it's going to go to that full tech side. Right. Okay. And and what Copilot's going to bring to that is the ability to have these very long, expensive, multi-person projects, okay, that are basically focused on developing new copilots for their hmm. organization. So well, I that makes sense. That shift Interesting. going that way. So yeah. What are your thoughts, Brian? I, I think the use cases, right? It's the use cases that come out. Um, yeah. from, from the customers and all that, you know, once they, once we finally figure out how people are using it and where people are having success, that's where Microsoft's going to probably invest. And I think that's, what's so cool about the whole thing, right? Is because it can kind of go anywhere you want it now that you can plug things into that engine. Um, yeah, and I think it, it's, it's very flexible, right? It's a very flexible model that they've built. So we really plug yeah. it in where we, wherever we want. It just really depends yeah. on what the use cases are and which ones, you know, uh, you know, which ones, you know, land home for, for customers and all that. Um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, how much money Microsoft's making off it every month, right? <laughs> and where? <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that, yeah, that, that's well, a good they, one. They, they, they want to make a lot of it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there there are, <laughs> I mean, if you think about some, you know, just, just since just since um, the year 2000, right? Mm -hmm. In in the space that, that, that the three of us play in. And so I, I, I kind of talk SharePoint and, and that area, right? We've yeah. actually seen, you know, this is like, I'll call it the third major revolution. You know, back in 2001, when Microsoft put out SharePoint Team Server, right? STS and WSSC1. And, and then even in, in three, um, this concept of, hey, this is a web provisioning engine, right? And, and yeah, we can show, show some documents out there. Um, but it really builds websites for you. And, and you, you've seen the, yeah. the, how revolu how much SharePoint has revolutionized uh, the way people work inside of organizations. And then when yep. Teams came out, okay, what, five years ago, that's another major, now the pandemic had a big chunk of that too, but this idea yep. of tightly coupling communication and collaboration at the same time, mm -hmm. um, if when people actually do it and they don't just use teams for IM and meetings, right. But they actually build workspaces and do stuff. Yep. We I've seen organizations fundamentally transform yes. themselves yes. And, yes. and become so much more productive. Yep. And, and I think we're on the cusp of this next third great revolution, yep. right. Yep. Of where AI is going to say, now that I've got all this data in the cloud, now that I've got these communications and collaboration tools that are out there and everybody's using the same stuff, yep. now suddenly 
Yeah. Yeah. Now suddenly we can start, we can start using some of these search tools to help you find, right? The new doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 well, and, but, but here the key is, right? It's find the relevant information because we can all go into Microsoft oh, yeah. search or Bing oh. or anywhere and type in a, type in a, a term and get back, you know, if it's a, if it's yeah. an internet search, it's, yeah. you know, a couple billion things, yeah. but but getting the right information, that's difficult. Yeah. And I do think I do think that's that's where it's going to help. And and I, I do believe that the other thing that has to happen is that there's going to be just like people had to learn how to use internet search engines. I remember, you know, Alta Vista and and later on yeah. Google and and Bing. But yeah. um uh what was that first one? I forget now. Um the one before Alta Vista. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, there was one before that. I just can't remember what it was right now. Um, anyway, the old search engines, right? You had to learn how to use pluses and minuses and quote marks and slashes and all kinds of yeah. things to, to, to craft that one perfect search, right? Mm -hmm. But it looks to me like with this AI stuff, it, this is iterative. It's yeah. a totally different skill set. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how, how, how are we going to train that administrative assistant, mm -hmm. Maria? To, to yeah. say, to, to do a totally different way. Yeah. And that is where I think we as consultants really need to, and consulting agencies, which mm -hmm. you and I both know, they have not traditionally put a lot of effort into this um, and, and not in the right way. Okay. Uh, at least not in the right way. They think they have, but not in the right way. I think we really are going to have to start really, really structuring adoption and change management offerings to these companies as consultants that really focus in on the utilization of mm -hmm. tools and i i am in the i am in the space where i think that an acm and you know this <laughs> an acm standalone acm product offering or service offering mm -hmm. is inherently probably one of the most valuable things you can do before you even tackle your SharePoint sure. migration, your team's deployment, your this, your that, you know, all of that, right? I feel like you should do ACM first. And it's going to be up to us to convince our clients to, to, to really embrace that. But it's going to be more needed than ever before because we're not just looking at Microsoft Copilot right? Um, we're looking at Google Bard and now Google Gemini, right? And I mean, for God's sakes, even X, former Twitter, it's always going to be Twitter to me. I don't care. Has Grok. <laughs> Have you heard yes. about Grok? Yes. So it, it, this, these things are popping up, not just in the sphere of a Google platform or a Microsoft platform. They're now popping up Facebook Meta's coming out yeah. with their own thing for, for Instagram. Um, you know, so they're popping up in all of our everyday things that we use all the time outside of work. Right. right. So this right. is going to be a revolution, not just within your nine to five, right. But yeah. outside of it and how we, how we can structure that is having very strong ACM offerings from the mm -hmm. beginning. So you do your, like I said before, you start off with analysis. Yeah, right. right. You say, it, okay, I'm going to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a, an analysis. And then after I know what I'm getting into and I know the specifics of each department and, you know, lower level employees and, and with the tasks and this and that, and I'm looking at it from an, with an AI eye, right? <laughs> There's a mouthful. Mm. Um, <laughs> You're looking at it with an AI eye and you, you know, then you have to go, okay, first things first, let's establish an, an a organizational wide ACM program structure that before we even tackling how we're going to get this down to the, to, to, in the team's chat features and, you know, the SharePoint syntax, Microsoft syntax features of SharePoint and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So before we even get there. It's going to be necessary for us to look at. So this is why I say I've never been a fan of introducing ACM into a Teams project or a SharePoint migration project or anything like that, because I am in this 
the camp of ACM should come first and outline how we're going to establish this champions program and we're going to do this and then utilize those resources within the projects underneath it, right? So mm -hmm. I've always been, and if you think about how we how we work the digital workplace offering, right? Mm -hmm. We we had this foundation with with all these things where we're looking at all these things and we're doing this assessment, which is analysis, right? And, and we're doing all this assessment. And I've always said, I think ACM should come on top of that. And then you build, you know, all the other cool things that we do. When you look at the house, that house diagram that you, you and I yeah. and Jeff Dalton worked on. So that, that I've always thought that the ACM piece belongs right after the analysis part, right? And All then right. you go into teams and then et cetera. So I think that yeah. companies really need to focus on a robust ACM program mm -hmm. to tackle AI. And that needs to be an organization wide. And I'm going to go out on a limb and I know some people are going to be like totally disagreeing with me on this and it may cause some stir, but it's not pro sci. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, um, it's, Microsoft, uh, it's yeah, different. Microsoft, no, it's totally different. Microsoft has invested over $4 million into creating their Microsoft adoption framework mm -hmm. specifically for these things, for their products, right? And when you think about ProSci, ProSci was developed back in the day of on-prem systems. And those on-prem and cloud systems are very different. In the cloud, you are constantly presented with change every 30 days constantly it's a new feature this was changed this where's my button go oh that moved over here <laughs> you know so you're constantly yeah. being presented with all these changes so to 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 say that oh it's you got to be pro side and you've got to do the pro side methodology and all that kind of stuff <laughs> yes the microsoft adoption framework is based on a lot of those things right it yeah. took took what it, what works and then elevated it and then added on top of it for yeah. cloud-based adoption right like that's oh. that's the focus and i think that people need to like really start kind of embracing the microsoft adoption framework because it's built for those tools <laughs> you know yeah, so I know. that's that's a key thing well well maria we could probably have a whole nother show and we'll have to do that sometime on talking about adoption and change management but <laughs> we have come to that point of our show once more brian what time is it it's time for one last thing before He's Christmas. Think hard on this one. One last thing before <laughs> Christmas. That's actually I should have put that on there. Um, and and so today, and and we're going to go with Brian first because Brian unfortunately has a has a scheduling conflict. He's got to drop here in a second. <laughs> but um, when you go, Brian, um, before you go, our one last thing this episode is: what is your favorite holiday special? So I'm going to go recent, recent. Okay. He came out okay. last year. Okay. Yeah. And I love Will Arnett. Absolutely <gasps> oh, love okay. Will Arnett. Okay. Yes. And there's a there's a show on Netflix called Murderville. If you've seen it. Okay. Yet. I have Will Arnett plays. It. Oh yeah, so he plays like a, <laughs> you know, a he's a detective and he hires a trainee, and the trainee comes okay. in and it's another celebrity, you know, so it's like a. You know, uh, Conan O'Brien's one of the first ones to join it. So go back and uh -huh. watch the Netflix special. But they did one last year, yet yeah, last year called "Who Killed Santa," and was based <laughs> off that Murderville, okay. that Murderville it. series. Oh and it's get this, it's Jason Bateman and it's Maya Rudolph, and it's hilarious. I love them, I I love mean, them so hilarious. much. Okay, oh, that's so right. good. I have to watch that. <laughs> we will definitely yeah. have to check that go out. Check that one out uh, for sure. But but Brian, drop when you got to drop. Uh, thank you we so much, thank Brian, you guys. As always, me. yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. I'll have a good. Um, so so uh, I'll go next, Maureen. I'll let I'll let you end since you're the guest uh, and get the prime time slot. Um, I, I thought hard about this because there have been some recent ones that were really good, and I we'd mentioned in the in the pre show that I really enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy um, holiday special last time. I mean, Kevin okay. Bacon, that oh. was so funny and just. <laughs> You know, Chef kiss. yes, it was, it was just really, it was so well done and it so captured the, the, the first movie, the concept of the first movie and guardians and everything like that. Uh, but, but I, I am going to go old school because I, I think back to my childhood and the thing that I looked forward to every year 
was the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the claymation, yeah. Yeah. cheesy, but, but you know, when, yeah. when I hear Burl I Ives her. singing, have a holly jolly Christmas, Christmas. I'm just, <laughs> that just, it just, it just puts me right in the mood. And, and frankly, I know Gene Autry did the original Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer song, but mm-hmm. for me, it's Burl Ives. You know, doing that, I just, it's just, it's the, it's the version I've heard so many times and, uh, and he was just, you know, and it silver and gold and all these songs, the, I, and I tell you the part I hated was the, I hated the Island of Misfit Toys that just, for some reason or scared the bejesus out of me, um, that the, all these toys that were just, you know, wrong and stuff like that. Yeah. But but yeah, that that's that's the thing when I think when, well, when, when I see Rudolph or, or clips of Rudolph or hear those songs, that's what puts me back in the mind of of Christmas again. Yeah, I, I would agree. You know, when I was a kid, I, I'll take it back to you a little bit, because when I was a kid, mm-hmm. one thing that I looked forward to every year for Thanksgiving and for Christmas mm-hmm. was Peanuts. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, the, 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 the Vince Guardi trio that 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 oh, do, 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 do. Yes. 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 yes, absolutely. And just yeah. loved it. Every year. That's what I looked forward to with the most for Thanksgiving. And you know, my, my dad would watch the Thanksgiving Day parade and the football games uh-huh. and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, where's my penis? <laughs> Right. There you go. <laughs> right. No, I want my Snoopy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I I was very um I was very you know very very enchanted by Snoopy. Um and, oh. and but as an adult, um nothing beats the Star Wars holiday special for me. Oh. I mean, I'm I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. <laughs> and can we get as cringy as possible? Was the name I mean, of the game for George Lucas was, with that? It was so um, bad. I've I've never so seen bad. I've I've never seen the whole thing. I've just seen parts really? of it. Oh but, my god, you have to! It's so oh. cringe that it's just it, it's like it's like watching a train wreck. You can't uh-huh. peel away from it, right? You um, know, you know where it would have fit perfectly. It would have fit perfectly as one of the shows in the Weird Al Yankovic movie UHF. Oh my right? god! It, yes. it would have been right, right, right next to Gandhi two and Conan the Librarian. The Star yes. Wars holiday special would have been right yes. perfect in there. Yes, it's so cringe worthy, <laughs> right? Um, but I really loved it. I love, you know, I mean, that is how we were introduced to Boba Fett, the character. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, because it was right in the middle of the first one and Empire Strikes Back, so it came out right, right in the middle of that. So it was kind of like yeah. a, almost like a tie-in to those two movies, if you can call it that. But I tell you something, George Lucas purposely made it so like that so that it would Mm -hmm. be memorable. And by golly, is it memorable? (laughs) It is certainly memorable. (laughs) I I know that my, my daughter, we introduced her to star Wars when she was five because her best friend was named. That is proper parenting. Oh, well, her (laughs) her best friend was named Leah and she wanted one day we were driving back from San Antonio back to Houston where we lived at the time. And she said, I want to hear a story about Princess Rhiannon and Princess Leah. And I said, oh, you want to hear a story about Princess Leah? And she's like, yes, I want to hear a story about Princess Leah. Well, let me tell you what happened a long time ago in a galaxy, galaxy far, far, far away. Far away. <laughs> and, and, and I related like the three movies to her in our two and a half hour drive back to Houston. Aww. And then we showed her the movies and she was like, this is a real movie. And she <laughs> was hooked. On that and stuff. it has been ever since, literally. It has been. <laughs> and 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 I remember we had the DVDs for Caravan of Courage. Oh boy. The Ewoks. And there were two yes. Ewoks movies. It was There's Caravan Ewoks. of Courage, and there was another one. <laughs> and she watched the heck. I, I those were they weren't quite holiday special cream, no, but they no. they were they were ooh, they those were those cannibals. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Well, yes, you know that's you know, those Ewoks. You know that they were going to cook Princess Leia. I mean, you know. Well, you know, Han Solo, Han Solo could use a little toasting. I think uh, a little he toasting. was the. I love toasting, yeah. But but you know that's and that is actually one thing that I missed about um, the special edition ending. Uh, while I admit that the, the the special edition ending with them going around the galaxy and seeing all the celebrations of of the defeat of the Empire, I missed the 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 Jub Jub song that the oh, Ewok sang because that one, that one and, and the mm. cooking Han Solo song, those little Ewok songs were just so hilarious to so me. Hilarious, and, right? 
and I, I still, I still hum them every now and then, you know, do, 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 and say, and Hansel is going, <laughs> trying to blow the torch out. Know. And she's like, <laughs> you know, that it, is, it, you know, he improv that. He oh, improv that. Me. I mean, that's priceless, that, that's, Harrison yeah, Ford. You and, know, and it's, you know, it's, it's so funny because. You know, I know, I remember when I saw that, I I didn't like the Ewoks all that much. I was, I was, you know, I was 82. So I was like 14, I guess, or something like that. And, you know, oh, you know, when you're 13, 14 years old, that, that stuff is just, oh, this is, you're, you're, you're too That's cool baby for that stuff, stuff. right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, I know he originally wanted it to be on Kashyyyk and have the Wookiees. And that would have been really, that would have been really awesome. But, you know, the more times I go back and watch it, I realized that, you know, he was a master at bringing in some humor yes. and comedy and, and yes. appeal. He's much like Shakespeare. If you look at Shakespeare, yeah. he always had the primary the wrapped you know, up. Well, into he, he would have the, the primary comedy. romance or, tr or drama mm -hmm. or whatever. And then he would have in his comedies, he would have the high comedy, which was yep. all wordplay. And then mm -hmm. he would have the low comedy, which was slapstick. Right. Yep. And so when you watch, for example, I was in the Tempest one time. Um, and, and so that was one thing. And then uh, um, a Midsummer Night's Dream is another one. Right. Where you have the guy with the 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 donkey's head. Right. That's the low comedy. Yes. But he also had the higher comedy where if you listen to the wordplay, you're like, ooh, that's. That's pretty funny kind of thing, yeah. right? Laugh and, it and up, hard ball. <laughs> exactly. And and that's exactly what George Lucas was able to do so well oh, in wow. in really all six of the movies that he did. Mm -hmm. More so in the first, the, the, the you know the original right, trilogy right. than the prequels. But even yeah. in the prequels, he got he did serious. A good job. Yeah, yeah, he got well, serious he, in the prequels, yeah. but he, he well, still had a lot of. There was a lot of comedy between yeah. you know, like like the, the famous Obi Wan. You know, you will you will go home and rethink your life. You know, <laughs> that sticks, right? I mean, well, there was or, always a little bit of that that com comedic value. In, or, in, in or, or or um, R two D two versus the battle the the super battle droids, right? Where oh he's like spit, spits the oil <laughs> yes. out and then sets it on fire, and you're just yes, like, yes, yes. And I mean, you know honestly, what? just 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 wonderful. I mean, George Lucas. You want to talk about somebody who changed those. We're talking about AI, right? And we're talking about mm -hmm. how that's going to revolutionize and everything. <laughs> but George Lucas revolutionized filmmaking. He was oh, the yeah. first director to ever put digital film, you know, the, his 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 films, his movies mm -hmm. on digital film versus, mm -hmm. you know, your 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 roles, you know, <laughs> of old school yeah, yeah. and the reels, yeah. right? Uh, and he was yeah. the first one to do that. And, you know, and, and, and he, you know, I mean, come on, you know, Skywalker sound, uh, oh, yeah. industrial the whole, the whole light magic, yeah, right? Yeah, all this amazing so stuff. He, he absolutely has been pivotal in filmmaking, um, you know, for decades and decades. And he has pushed the envelope further than anyone ever thought. I mean, he mm -hmm. is what made James Cameron's ideas possible. George oh, yeah. Lucas gave way for James Cameron to do what he did with like avatar and stuff. Right. I, so, um, you know, I, I, I love everything about that man and, and including the holiday special. It was, wow. he, he absolutely made it with the intention for it to be cringeworthy. Right. So I, I love well, that. He, he, he succeeded there. Yes. Well, Maria, I want to thank you once again. It is all, I mean, you and I could get on the on, on this know. and just talk for hours <laughs> anyway about everything and anything, but, but it really was great to, to talk to you about, um, I'm so glad AI I finally got to make it to the, like to the podcast. I know, I know. That's well, we, we, we took it, we took a, we took a hiatus longer than we wanted to, but we're trying to get back in, in doing this and, um, you know, and now we're, we're putting them up on YouTube. Um, even though Gotta I get them on LinkedIn. For, I know. Well, I, well, I, well I, I, yeah. I, and I resisted it for a very long time, uh, putting it out on YouTube, but I, you know, we're, we're getting there. Um, but, but you know, I wanted to thank you very much once again for coming on board. We'll have to do this You're again welcome. sometime. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and I wanted to remind everybody, you know, look, uh, I, I was out actually, I was actually, I was out earlier looking at our YouTube channel. Okay. And I was flabbergasted to discover that, um, you know, our, our number, you know, we, we've been joking about the fact that, um, you know, we have uh, two or three um, listeners to our podcast. We've been joking about that forever. But, you know, hey, we are in the double digits now in, our, in our YouTube channel. We have hit 
12 subscribers. I, I mean, know. that's like four that's times amazing. what I thought we would ever max out at, you know, uh, though. So no, we're not, we're not going to monetize anytime soon, but that's not what this is about. Anyway, this is about having fun and yep. hopefully educating you guys. Um, obviously reach out to us. Uh, if you want to, you can, you can uh, go to cloudwhisperers.net. We have our website up and running now. Um, I'm putting the show notes out there. There's a contact us form. You can send us information there. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. Uh, the Cloud Whispers is our channel name. Obviously, just look for the Cloud Whispers on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or on Google Podcasts. And then you can also, if you want the audio version of any of those, the audio version, you can go to SoundCloud and just go to Cloud Whispers uh, in SoundCloud and you will find us there. So. Until next time, I will bid everyone adieu. And our outro music 